Okay, thanks for the introduction. Um, welcome everyone to my talk. I'm Chong Wei from UIUC. So today I'm going to talk about the DT Cry. It's a high performance distributed execution engine at a scale. And this is my PhD thesis. Um, this is a research project about how to make the parallel and distributed uh, programming easier to handle. And here's what I'm going to do for you today. I'm going to show you how you can boost your productivity in writing a parallel code by using a DT Craft system we introduced. And next, I'm going to give you some hands-on examples so you can um, get a sense how to use this system and you can leverage your time to produce a promising result. Well, we know today the hardware is just a commodity, commodity resource, right? Because now we have um, this cloud computing, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, we can easily get access to uh, hundreds of tons of machines with the cutting edge hardware resources. And we don't have to pay extra money out of our bucket to for this on hardware maintenance and to build this uh, hardware infrastructure on our own. And the only thing we have to pay is to hire a programmer because programming takes people and time. And if you look at the average salary of the US uh, uh, in terms of the uh, software engineer, the salary is really high. So how to make the most use of this programmer to write a program leveraging this um, cluster computing resource becomes the most in, uh, important challenges. Well, the problem is today's parallel programming suffers from too many redundant steps. For example, if I, want to, if, I want, if I want to write a very simple code to do the two things, to do, to do several things at the same time, there are many redundant steps I have to do. Take this C++ as an example. Suppose I want to do two things at the same time. The first, you have to create a one thread and create another thread and do this explicitly binding on between the job you want to do and which thread you want to perform the job. And then the second thing is this join here. But once the job is done, then I have to manually explicitly specify, tell the, the, the thread to release the resource. And when the program becomes larger and larger, the order you join the thread becomes uh, actually matter because if you do not specify the join order in the, in the right way, you will run, run into this data problem. Then you need actual stuff to get rid of uh, this problem. So as a result, we want to support computational and productive code. But the term productivity is very loaded. If I ask you what it really means, I, I'm sure I can get multiple answers from you, right? Because for some people, productivity means programming language. They use the Scala, Python, MATLABs to prototype their job as quick as possible. And some people, they use uh, this big data tool like a Hadoop MapReduce and Apache Spark because this tool allows them to express their parallelism in a, in a very high level manner so they can gain these transparency benefits. But for some people like us, we, we really care about this performance. We usually use um, this uh, native language like a C or C++ to ensure the full control over the system resource so we can always deliver the best performance. Well, so the goal of this project is we want to strike a balance between these three things. We want to come up with a system that can deliver the, the transparency so you don't have to, we, we want the users to uh, be able to use uh, some high level API in terms of C and C++, so they can still get a pretty much uh, very good performance. But at the same time, we want to deliver, uh, we want to hide all those uh, difficult concurren concurrency details from the users. So to achieve this, um, we offer the solution in an open source project called DT Craft. And in a nutshell, DT Craft is a unified engine to simplify the cluster programming. Well, this is really important because real time, a real distributed application typically combines uh, multiple, multiple forms of processing. And it's always the stitching together of this uh, separate system. And you have to get a consistent result. And developing you know, on, on, on top of this is really painful. So the main thing behind DT Crab is to save your time away from the pain of DevOps. And we give you pretty much you, everything you need to build up a um, uh, uh, application running on a computer cluster. And the DT Club has uh, multiple components like this uh, network programming, input and out output stream, and also this event driven uh, programming environment. And we also give you some uh, flexibility to do this uh, resource control in your program. And of course, we also give you the serialization and deserialization so you can pass the data between our different computers. Well, in a closer look into the system, Generally, uh, you express your parallelism 
in terms of our string graph programming model, which I'm going to talk about uh, more detail uh, in later. Well, once you express, once you cast your application into this string graph framework, and you can submit this framework to our system, and you don't have to worry about those details of, for example, how to partition your program, how to distribute your workload, how, how to do this uh, process communication. Our system will automatically do this for you. The only thing you have to do is to think about how you can cast your application into this string flow graph. And string graph programming model is a key concept in um, this DTCraft project. And the string graph is a general representation of a data flow. And I know the string graph, the term is a little bit confusing because um, it's just like a container. Many people are, you know, from the software way are abusing this term. And the string graph can mean multiple, uh, it can have multiple meanings at different places. But in DTCraft, it is a general representation of the data flow graph. It gives, give, it gives you the abstraction over the computation and communication. Well, and the idea is um, somewhat analogous to this assembly line model, where you have um, um, two ends. Uh, one end keep generating the, the, the stuff of good, or the data of goods, and the data will go through the underlying channel, which could be either the shared memory or, or the network socket in our case. And once the other end receives the data, and it can start processing, uh, start processing, uh, do, do computation on, on top of this data. So as you can see, the string graph programming model is much more flexible, right? because once we receive the data, we can immediately launch the computation. And we don't have to uh, wait for, for example, there are some, some conventional data flow graph, you have to wait until all the data arrive before you can um, do the computation. So in this case, we can determine the perform performance in much um, detail. So now I'm going to show you how to, you know, how to use the DTCraft to write a simple application by giving you some example. Well, in order to write a DTCraft applications, and these are the five steps you need. First, you need to, of course, you need to decide a string graph for your applications. That's the main idea of this project. And once you decide a string graph for your application, then you have to specify the data type you want to communicate between a different machine or different vertices. And then you will define a computation callback, telling the system what you want to do once the data arrive. And then you can attach the resource on the vertices, specifying the resource, um, for example, in terms of memory or CPU or GPU and then you can submit the, use our submission script to submit your program to the cluster. So suppose I want to use this um, to write a very simple, uh, simple, simple application called this um, concurrent ping pong. And this is a very representative workload in many parallel computing because it, it represents this um, back and forth message passing and it is also the fundamental building block of many feedback control. So in this program, uh, we have two ends, and one end keeps sending, one end keeps sending a binary data, random, randomly send, send a, a binary data to the other end, and the iteration will stop whenever one receives 100 ones. So this is the string graph. We have two vertices. As I say, each vertex keeps sending a random binary number to the other end, and the iteration will stop whenever uh, 100 received. So second, the second step is to decide the data type because we send a random binary data, so the data type is a Boolean number. And then I will define a computation callback. And this is symmetric because this, the program is a symmetric, so the computation callback is the same as both sides, A and B. So the computation is once the data is ready, then I want to extract the Boolean from the underlying input stream. And if I already received 100, then I will close the underlying channel. And closing one channel will automatically force the other end to, to be closed. Next, I will assign one gigabyte memory and one CPU to each vertex. And I will submit this program to using our submission script. And once you do this, once, once this has been done, then the system will automatically partition the graph and distribute this um, partition to two machines. And here is how it looks in terms of code. 
And in general, there's only a couple lines of code you have to write, and it's a sequential program which gives you the fully distributed across uh, uh, multiple machines. As I said, you have to use, uh, you only need to call, you, you have to create the two vertexes using our graph API. And once you create a vertex, then you can create a stream connecting A to B and also connecting B to A and define your computation callback. And finally, you can use our container interface to assign the resource you want. Now, what if we want to build something larger? Suppose I want to do a machine learning classifier at the real time. So in this program, we have, um, we have uh, one vertex, that is a data source. And this vertex keep generating or receiving the data outside. And once it receives the data from an external device, and it will uh, process this data and send, for example, the meme image. And I have another vertex to receive each image stream from this data source. And once this vertex receives an image, it has to do some prediction or do this classify. And this becomes extremely easier in our, oh by the way, and this has to be fully distributed. This data source has to sit in one machine because usually this processing this data will take a large uh, amount of uh, computer resource. And we have another machine learning uh, component sitting on a different machines. And we will want this program to be fully distributed. Well, using DTCraft, this becomes a lot easier. First, we only have to create a vertex as a data source to generate this image. And then I will create another vertex to receive the data from this vertex, this data source. And this vertex that processes the data is, in fact, a classifier. And you can use our built-in machine learning API to create a deep learning, uh, deep neural network. And you can classify and do this uh, prediction and training and do this whole thing at online, in online fashion. And once you specify these two vertices and you can connect uh, these uh, two vertices uh, together and assign the resource to each vertex and submit this program to the cluster. Because there is only 60 lines of code to enable this um, distributed machine learning with streaming. We also compare DTCrab with uh, one of the best cluster computing framework, Apache Spark, uh, in two machine learning workloads. One is a logistic regression, and another one is a k-means clustering. And as you can see, um, the DTCrab is uh, way better than uh, this Apache Spark in terms of uh, both uh, runtime and scalability. And it's about 4 to 11 speed up on logistic regression compared to the Spark. And it's about 5 to 14 speed up on the k-means clustering compared to uh, Spark uh, uh, machine learning libraries. And the reason is um, we found out Spark um, has too much overhead on catching those data uh, from, the, from the distance to memory because the Spark claims them to be a, this iterative um, uh, big data computing. So they typically need to spend uh, some, some actual overhead on catching the data from the disk to, to the to their internal uh, data structure so they can process the data in memory. But in DTCraft, everything is by default in memory. So we also compare uh, with the Spark again on this um, graph, um, um, graph algorithm. So I'm finding the shortest path on the median scale circuit graph. And we implement this uh, Bellman for the algorithms for this uh, distributed uh, graph processing. And again, uh, graph processing is more compute intensive. So you can see um, the benefit of this uh, DT curves is, uh, is uh, clear in this case. And in terms of the, um, uh, the performance, the DT curve is uh, more than an order of magnitude faster than the Spark. It's about 10 to 20 times faster on this uh, million scale circuit ground, finding this the uh, shortest path. As we, as we increase the size of the graph, the scalability is even more uh, remarkable. And where we, the, uh, the, the runtime growth is uh, approximately linear in, in DT graph, but the growth uh, of the spot is uh, almost like uh, exponential. Yes. So I'm going to wrap up the talk. Uh, stay in touch with uh, us. You can. Uh, go to our uh, GitHub to check out the code and take a look. Thank you. I think I'm running out of your time. Yeah, we do compare with the MBRM. 
the, the, the thing we find is because MPI is pretty much hard-coded, right? So the performance is, uh, uh, compared with the MPI, of course, our performance is a little bit lower because we need this actual overheads coming from this API and also this resource control. But I would say the target is quite different because uh, reusing MPI, you have to hard-code almost everything. You have to do this uh, explicit message passing, which is very tedious and error-prone. But in our case, we we don't we don't suffer from this um, low level overhead. Yes. 